dear colleagues, welcome to the third Prevent from Caries Symposium. In this conference, we are welcoming Dr. Pantelis Kurios from Greece, and his presentation is about color selection in composite restorations. First, let me introduce our speaker. Dr. Pantelis Kurios acquired his DDS degree from Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in 1997. He completed the postgraduate program of operative dentistry in 2001 and successfully supported his PhD thesis on biocompatibility of adhesives. He is currently following a Master of Science program on aesthetic dentistry at King's College London. His clinical focus is dental aesthetics and minimal invasive dentistry, and he is working as a tutor in the postgraduate program of operative dentistry at the Dental School of Thessaloniki. He also runs a private practice since 1998. He is lecturing and presenting hands-on courses on aesthetic and composite around Greece, and he has been in the organizing committee of several congresses. He has published his work, research work in Science Citation Index, peer-reviewed international and domestic journals. He is an active member of so professional and scientific societies. Now, I leave the floor to you, Dr. Curious. Thank you, Dr. Boskurt. Uh, thanks to the organizing committee and, of course, my friend Serhat for the invitation of being part of your third Prevent from Carriers Symposium. And I would say that uh, let's hope that uh, this situation that uh, makes us all go and meet uh, online sometimes falls down and I will have the opportunity of guesting you in Thessaloniki probably uh, meeting you in uh, some uh, in any place in Istanbul or Turkey, I would be glad to, to do this uh, sometimes uh, from uh, one next to the other. So let let's hope that everybody says says stay uh, safe and says stays uh, healthy. So uh, let me update my CV because it was a little bit outdated. So I'm very sorry. I. I, I <laughs> I must have sent you uh, an old uh, CV of mine. So just let me uh, start my presentation. I, I have a small introduction of my uh, CV. So please uh, confirm if you can see uh, the presentation. Is everything OK? All right. So uh, not, not, not now. We are just waiting for your screen. All right. I I have started sharing it, but Please let me know when I am able okay. to start. We don't see it right now. We are waiting. OK. Let me yes. restart. Yes, yeah. we, you see yes, it. we okay. see it right now. OK. All right. So let me start uh, with uh, first uh, a small introduction about myself. Uh, I live and work in Thessaloniki since uh, 1990. Thessaloniki is uh, at the northern part of Greece, and it's very near to the ancient uh, capital of uh, Macedonia, uh, which was the hometown of Alexander the Great. Actually, Thessaloniki is the name of Alexander the Great's sister. So my uh, uh, my. Full, I'm an assistant professor, full professor in uh, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, where we have uh, the most sophisticated uh, equipment available. We have also a laser clinic where we can provide uh, certification for laser use in dentistry. Uh, we have equipped uh, the uh, recently the uh, uh, undergraduate clinic with uh, very sophisticated equipment, and we also have. Uh, options of making uh, courses on microscopic dentistry. And I also have a conjunction with uh, King's College London, where I graduated from the Master's uh, on Aesthetic Dentistry program. Here is the picture on my graduation day. And now I do some supervising on the uh, uh, MSc, on the uh, candidates of the MSc on the Aesthetic program, and I also uh, teach at the courses of the King's College London. I'm visiting professor there. Uh, 
Uh, dear, dear doctor, we cannot hear your voice. We cannot hear your voice, dear doctor. I'm sorry for that. We had ah, yes, a, a short okay. interruption. I, I had to re-unmute the, the mic. So I was saying that uh, I am related to, to King's College London. I, I graduated from the MSc of Aesthetic Dentistry. This is a picture of my graduation. And I currently am uh, visiting King's College London to teach uh, to the MSc Aesthetic Dentistry program. And I also supervise uh, some uh, MSc thesis uh, on candidates or, or um, I am grading uh, some thesis on candidates on uh, the aesthetic dentistry uh, program on of King's College London. Uh, my own dissertation was related to color coordinates of dental resin composites and it was an introduction of a colorimetric workflow for direct restorations. This uh, gave rise to the uh, to an application uh, that uh, further has been developed and keeps developing and I will have the opportunity at the end of my lecture to present to you a, a workflow. So, today we, we are here to talk about dentistry, but uh, I'm trying, I will try more to talk about optics, optics actually in dentistry. And when we say, when we talk optics, uh, I have to say that color is a measurable value. It's not quantitative, it's qualitative. We can actually measure color and we, we do so uh, when we communicate uh, one to each other, we do so, we do communicate color. But first, let me say that colorimetry is the science that quantifies and describes physically the human color perception. Well, Spectrophotometry, it's a different uh, issue. It's the quantitative measurement of the reflection of transmission properties of a potential of a material as a function or a wavelength. Okay, so how do we qualify color? Let me speak first about how do we qualify color in computers. For example, in this slide, when I, I was made in it, uh, if you uh, go and look for the colors of the color options when you for example uh, you have a font then you can see that you have the rgb the rgb stands for red green blue and you have some values and you can make these values hue saturation and luminosity and then you can communicate those three numbers and provide to uh, to a distant location an exact color and you can see that changing the value changing for example the luminosity it changes the color, okay? So this is how we communicate colors in computers. Of course, the final product, uh, it's a different story because uh, if we do not have calibrated uh, screens, then we will not see uh, the same color because we also need to calibrate things in color. Uh, we all know that when we visit some stores which uh, sell... Uh, televisions, for example, which show, project the same program, we see the differences in colors. This is because there are no... Okay, so I just need to unplug something because it, it makes... Okay, so we will have no inter in interactions since, okay. All right. So how about the optics in dentistry? Actually, optics are very well documented that they are related to the oral diagnostics. We all know that we can diagnose, for example, an anterior lesion on, on the interproximal spaces. When we take a look uh, through the dental mirror, uh, while we let in the light of the projector of the uh, of uh, our dental chair passes through uh, an incisor, so we can diagnose uh, a lesion at the interproximal through the transmission of the light through the interproximal spaces. This this same quality has actually been quantified 
and we have uh, devices available like this one on, on the picture which is diagnodent and those devices can estimate uh, if you have an interproximal carriers and they do this by measuring the uh, translucency of the enamel and the dentin so we have qualified the, the uh, how how well or, or how how well transparent or how opaque uh, dental tissues are and we have uh, settled uh, values that we are considering to be normal or, or not normal so let's analyze a little bit about the tooth optics when we have a, a light source and, and a light beam that hits the uh, the front surface of, a, of an incisor for example then we have the following phenomena some amount of those uh, this light will be transmitted through the uh, uh, dentinal tissues and uh, will pass behind the behind the tooth some amount will be reflected back and uh, is is the same amount that we see as a glare in a dental picture some amount will be absorbed and will be scattered inside the dental tissues and finally some amount will be diffused at the surface all those are optical phenomena which are very important on the uh, uh, on any kind of restoration that we are uh, about to perform in a, in a in an anterior region so uh, let's let me talk about physics we have the phenomena we, uh, we have the refractive index what is this it's uh, the dimensionless number that describes how fast light travels through the material and it is defined by by this formula where c is the speed of the light in vacuum and v is the phase velocity of the light in the medium so we all know that when we have an interface where the refractive index is uh, changing uh, we have an angulation we have a, a destruction of the light beam and how do we know this because since we we were kids we were being uh, we were thinking at, at, the, at the start that when we put a spoon inside the inside a glass of water then the spoon breaks actually it's not a physical breakage it's a it's an optical breakage and this happens because the light hits the, the uh, water surface and gets distracted and the, uh, this causes us to see the spoon as as, a, as breaking and this is also have a very good application uh, when we talk about uh, art in photography and this is not a photoshop this is the actual photograph this is very interesting uh, what we see is the result of the refractive index the same thing happens when we talk about dental tissues we do have uh, quantified uh, in several papers uh, the uh, average the mean of the refractive index of the dental tissues but let me take a closer look let me show you a closer look enamel is not uh, the same everywhere we all know that teeth are covered with the aprismatic outer enamel aprismatic enamel is glass-like it, it does not have a uh, does not it's like a glass outside the prismatic enamel okay so then we have the prisms inside the enamel the prisms are uh, going to a different directions dependent on the place that you are looking at and they have different thicknesses and of course we have a, a different surface which we call the dentino enamel junction which is also glass-like and has its own optical properties and then of course we have the dentin okay so uh, what has been calculated as the mean value for the refractive index uh, for the enamel it's 3.1 and for dentin is 2.6 but this is not uniform for every uh, every tooth and let's let's have a closer look okay so how do those prisms optically work when the light goes through those prisms it it gets 
uh, refracted in the interprismatic uh, spaces. Okay? So, if we look at an enamel which have lots and big spaces, interprismatic, then it looks like the glass uh, of the car at the right side of the screen, at, uh, excuse me, at the left side of the screen, which is not clear, you cannot see through this. While when it's homogeneously made, when we have the prisms uh, uh, homogenized, then you can see through, through those prisms more easily. And this is actually what happens, and this is actually what represents young enamel on the left side versus old enamel on the right side. So the enamel gets more translucent. So if we compare the enamel of the young people versus the aged people, in, on the young people we have big and large interprismatic spaces, while on the aged people we have relatively fused prisms. And this is a normal procedure which happens uh, through the aging of enamel. So, as a consequence, we have a high refractory index for young enamel and a low refractory index for the aged enamel. This causes the enamel to be less transparent for the, the young people and transparent glass-like for the aged people. And this causes the dentin to show more and this is dictating more the color. So we have to understand those optical qualities in order to reproduce them. And we actually see this in everyday practice. Because what, what actually is the dehydra dehydration of the enamel? And this is where the rubber dam was uh, ending. Uh, when removed the, the rubber dam, we see the dehydrated enamel, dehydrated enamel versus the normal enamel, and we see the how the color is changing. Why? Because we have no water in the interprismatic uh, spaces, so we have more scattering of the light on the white enamel. So what about the dentin? What are the differences? Well, dentin is a very, very much variable tissue. We, you, you can have uh, like uh, 70, uh, 74 percentage of the surface of the dentin uh, as a, a dentinal tubuli, or you can have the opposite. Uh, where this happens, actually, when we, uh, when we age, uh, we have less uh, dentinal tubules, more narrow dentinal tubules, more hard tissue. While when we are young or when we are in deep layers, we have <coughs> open dentinal tubules with, uh, 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 with which. Uh, take big amount of, of the surface of, of the enamel. And this actually has an optical uh, result. The result is that the age or the superficial dentin is, uh, uh, has a low luminosity, it's dark, and it's uh, highly transparent. And I, I, I need you to understand that the dark in the dental tissues or the any semi-transparent material like the dental tissues is equal to translucent, dark equal to translucent. Please keep this in mind. Well, uh, for young dentin, it's highly, it's high, its luminosity is high, it's white, it's, uh, it's bright, and uh, the translucency is low, so it's relatively opaque. So if, you, if we take those and put those together, for the aged, aged individ individuals, we have dark dentin, transparent, plus translucent enamel. So the average is more translucent and more dark. While for the young individuals, we have some bright dentin which scatters light, and then we have some relatively opaque enamel. So the, this is why we see white teeth and bright teeth on the young individuals. And this is why as we get older, our teeth are getting darker and more translucent. So, when it comes to our restorations, okay, we are trying to mimic uh, enamel plus dentin plus the aprismatic enamel on the surface plus the dentino enamel in ju uh, junction plus all those optical criteria, all those uh, 
different uh, ways to scatter, to diffuse, to reflect light with a relatively homogeneous material. And this is a C, uh, an SEM picture of a composite resin. Uh, it doesn't look uh, that it has some kind of uh, heterogeneity, but uh, it, in our eyes, those are less than 40 microns and are not visible, the, the pillars. So it's, uh, it, it's considered optically a relatively homogeneous material. So what is that uh, uh, optical properties of composites are mostly dependent of, on? First of all, the percentage of the filler volume. The more filler, the more filler that uh, uh, a composite contains, the more uh, opaque it becomes. Of course, it's related to the kind of the fillers that uh, is containing. Like, uh, for example, the filler shape and the filler size. For example, estelite, which is a spherical uh, composite, this means that it does not contain any uh, like those on the picture fillers, which has, are uh, uh, have no skin or no, or no shape, uh, reflect the light more hom homogeneously. So it's more translucent. The spherical uh, fillers create more translucent material. How about the chemical composition? The filler, uh, some fillers are more translucent than the other fillers. For example, barium and strontium fillers. And of course, the pigments of the organic matrix. Those are the main components that influence the optics of the, on a dental composite. And of course, uh, the whole, from the start of my lecture, I'm trying to explain why we cannot achieve never uh, to have the same results under different lighting conditions. Why? Because we have, we have a different molecular molecular structure on different materials. And this is what we call the metamerism. It's the optical quality of materials to appear different under different lighting conditions, even if they appear similar in one condition. So it, it's possible that we make uh, in our lighting conditions, in, a, in our office, in our practices, uh, some, uh, compo uh, some composite which looks perfect and then if you move to a different, uh, uh, for example, a yellow light or a blue light to look slightly different or even more different. So this is, we cannot avoid metamerism uh, unless we achieve the same molecular uh, structure of material. So let me talk to you about the chameleon effect. I'm going to let you see this very well, very good video. So, I don't know how many of you uh, have seen already this video before, or how many of you the first time that have seen this video have realized right from the beginning that this is not a chameleon that you're watching it, but there are two people which are uh, uh, one on, on another. So, what is actually the chameleon effect? The chameleon effect, uh, we refer to it as a chameleon effect, but let me please change this because on the literature is mentioned as blending effect and uh, is the uh, assimilation of the color. This is the quality of two colors to be perceived less different when we put the uh, one next to each other. Uh, 
For example, we have a, a delta E, a difference of color when they're apart, the delta E goes down when uh, we put them together. And this is a not measurable phenomenon. We have some publications on, on this issue. This is not a measurable phenomenon with conventional colorimetric devices. And why do we have the, the chameleon effect? Because the light passes from, the, from one material to the other, and which this thing is directly related to translucency, which actually translucency is measurable parameter in the C lab units. And I am going to show you some clinical examples on how and what the, the importance of this phenomenon is. We do see now a picture of uh, some composite veneers which have been replaced on the uh, broken space with a different composite veneers. And when we look at those, we can easily realize that we have some low translucency on the opaque surface on the original material that was placed before. So this is a, a very bright and little tr less translucent material, but we have a higher translucency on the repair material. And you can see when you put the one next to the other, you can see the difference. And the difference is, the, is that grayish look. Why do we see the, this grayish look? Because it blends, it, it, it has a blending effect, but not with the composite that is adjacent to it, maybe with it as well, but with the background of the mouth, which is black, it, it's dark. This is why we see gray. A closer look, okay? So, The, the contra example, we have a restoration which is made by a relatively opaque material. And you can see that we have a highly translucent tissue which has been restored with a low translucent material. And you, uh, despite the, thing, the, the fact that the color of the restoration is pretty much the same with the color of the tooth, the main color of the tooth, you can easily see how less translucent and how ugly it, it does look. And so this is my, uh, let me say, let me say uh, zero case, uh, the, because this is my case. Uh, so this is a case which I very much like to, to, to show to my presentations, despite that the, it, it's not a work which I'm proud of. Uh, I, I've done this 15 years ago when I bought the SpectroShade uh, device because I needed to have a uh, calculation a uh, number on the uh, shades that I want to select from my composite. Then I took the SpectroShade. I, uh, the SpectroShade suggest me that I will have to use an A3 uh, material. So I went to my refrigerator. I took out the uh, A3 from the uh, Majesty Aesthetic from Curare, which is a, a spherical very translucent and very good material to, to be used. And I, I made these uh, restorations. I'm sure that all the time that you are looking at this picture, most of you have uh, been focused on those two restorations. I don't know how many of you are seeing this one. So these are three restorations which have been performed by the same person with the same material at the same time with the same techniques. Yet, uh, the two of them are highly visible while we have a, a relatively invisible restoration. Why this is happening? Because those two restorations are, do not have any palatal wall uh, as a remaining behind, while this restoration has a remaining palatal wall. So you see a case where we have both uh, the blending effect, the chameleon effect, a friend of us, and an enemy of us. So if we put those together, when, you, when we select a shade for the anterior zone, first things first, we have first to decide about what kind of translucency we need our material to have. So decision number one is the translucency. And this will be dependent 
on the number of the cavity walls that we have available. So if you have a high number of bonded surfaces, if like uh, the one that was not shown on the case which I showed you before, or you have a low number of the bonded surfaces like the ones that had no background on, on the behind, it's a different case. So if you have a palatal wall intact or the palatal wall is missing. So then on the left side, the, the blending effect is a friend, while on the right side, the blending effect is an enemy. So you have to select a translucent composite when you're having the case which is on the left side, well, while you have to select an opaque composite system because this will have to give to provide the color characteristics that you did not to, to uh, acquire the, its color from the environment, but it has to provide the color to the restoration. So uh, a, a case example, it's a class three lesion for, the, for a translucent composite and a class four lesion for an opaque composite. This is very important, please. If you, if you wish, take a snapshot on, on this slide, please. Okay, so how do we measure the translucency? We actually uh, are measuring the L, A, and B uh, on the CLAB system, which I will uh, talk later, uh, against black and against white background. And this will be the translucency parameter. And in the translucency of a material is thickness related characteristic. Let me make a short comment because we have not that much, that much time about the uh, Vita shade guide or any shade guide. Please tell me, do you see the same color uh, from the cervical to the incisal area of those uh, uh, shade types? For example, do you see the, sh the same color on the cervical? Do you see, or do you see any uh, translucency on the incisal part? I mean, it's uh, in in what way do you select which color fits where using the shade tab? Let me let me show you a short video. Here you can see the L and A B and B values, uh, which are look look how they differentiate. Uh, from the cervical to the uh, incisal of a, of, a, of a shade tab. And you will see that the lightness is very high on what is the original color. If we do this with a polarized picture, those are the same shade tabs. Look how the lightness went down. So the polarized pictures is, is uh, able to provide us the real colors and uh, make, make us estimate the real colors. Yet you can see that there is a high change uh, while we move from the cervical to the incisal area. So actually you cannot uh, select a shade with this way. You can only communicate this to the dental uh, technician, uh, which uh, we will use those pictures to, to try to imitate the, uh, the, the natural uh, optics of the, of the adjacent teeth. And, okay, how do the shades of commercially available composites do correspond to the Vita shade guide or any other shade guide, not just the Vita shade guide? Do they correspond actually? This picture is courtesy of Angelo Putignano, the founder of Style Italiano. And those are uh, one millimeter thickness samples and they have all been classified as A3 composites, which you can see how uniformly they fit, uh, how well they fit on the, on the uh, color parameter. Actually, they're totally different to each other. You cannot select an A3 and then go and select which one, this one or that one or this one, it's totally different. So you cannot take a shade tab, select the, the, uh, the color according to the shade tab, go to the refrigerator and take the, the uh, what is named to be the same color and, and expect a good result. This is impossible. So what are those LAB parameters? This is the Hunter color space, which has been created back in 1946 and has uh, lately in 1976 has been modified 
by the Commission of uh, Illumination. Uh, and they, uh, <coughs> they have been classified the luminosity on the uh, vertical axis. And we have the black colors on the bottom and the white colors at the, at the top. And they have created two axes. The A axis is green versus red. And the B axis, which is uh, the, the important uh, axis on the dentistry, is yellow against blue. The, why is it important? Because we all know that uh, yellow, which means plus B values are dentin, and blue, which means minus B values are enamel shades when we're talking about layering systems. So if we actually take and calculate the LAB parameters on the, uh, for, for example, those A3 body shades, we do see the differences that I was describing before. For example, the Estelite A3, which is the blue, is this one, is somewhere in the middle on the yellowness. The B value is the yellowness, how yellow or how blue it is. Okay, and you see that it's thickness dependent, 0 0.5 millimeter sample, 1 millimeter, 1.5, 2 millimeter sample thickness. Okay, so you see how it develops the yellowness. And you can see that the most yellow A3 is estelite, is, I'm sorry, uh, this is the mosaic. And the less yellow, the more bluish uh, A3 body shade is the uh, Gradia anterior A3, which is also has some logic behind it because it's it's an anterior material. It has to be less blended, less translucent. This is why it's more whitish. So if we take a look at the translucency, then then look how expected is by what I have explained so far that the estelite A3 is the more translucent material. Why? It's spherical. It is spherical. So it was expected that it will be more translucent. While the gradia anterior A opaque 3 is as expected to be less translucent. It is an opaque material after all. It has to be that way. All right? So, uh, but if you compare the genial anterior A opaque 3 to the asteria A3, B, A3 body, it's very close. So you see that those two colors are classified in a different way. The one is opaque, the other one is body, but they behave optically the same. So we have to know those things. We have to evaluate our composites before we use them. And let me com let me comment on the luminosity. All right. So as expected, the more translucent material, the less luminous it is. So the estelite A3 is the less luminous, which means which means the darker material of all. While the mosaic A3 is on the top of the luminosity for the 0 0.5 thickness. Gradient anterior, the opaque material, is on the top of the luminosity when we have a thickness of more than one millimeter. And how about the omnichroma? We all know the revolution of the never take a shade again. One composite that fits to all colors. How do you think that this happens? What do you think that is the quality of the Omnichroma composite that makes it fit to all composites. I think that if you have watched carefully what I just described, then we all know that we are talking about translucency. And please, this is the brochure of the Omnichroma. Take a look. It's class one cavities. Class one cavities have, have the surrounding of the walls, have all the walls. So the material can blend inside uh, and can pick the color of the of the tooth. So how do you think this this material is going to be? Is going to be highly translucent or low or low translucent? 
this is a sample of one millimeter thickness. You can see right through it. It's glass. It's almost bears no color uh, characteristics. Nothing. It's glass. And here it's the Omnichroma blocker, which comes uh, together with the Omnichroma. So the, the, uh, the, th the thought behind this system, it's two materials and just play with the thicknesses. The Omnichroma blocker on the one millimeter, you cannot see anything. So you have a glass and a wall, and then you can match them together and try to imitate what you see. I don't know how, how easy this is, but I actually have calculated this uh, translucency parameter of the Omnichroma, and you can see that the, uh, uh, the translucent Omnichroma is almost two times as translucent as the blocker. So you have two materials, one opaque, one like a glass, glass-like, and then you can uh, play with the thicknesses of the material that you use in order to imitate the uh, adjacent dental tissues. In my opinion, this is going to work very well in class one cavities. It's not going to work in class two cavities. It's not going to work never in class four cavities. Probably it may do does some work when you have class three cavities. So all those data that I showed you, it's a, a very, uh, uh, it's a work with a great effort, which I formulated and then I have created a, a huge database. I'm gonna show you. Okay, I was uh, making samples of different thicknesses and uh, I'm still doing this and I am uh, calculating them against gray, 75% gray, against black and against white and I, I'm trying, I am calculating the optical parameters uh, for different thicknesses of all the composites that I could uh, get in my hands. Uh, also, this gray card that you saw in the, in the previous slides, it's a gray card which I created and I'm not yet uh, trading. I'm, not, uh, I, I'm only offering to, to friends to, to try. <laughs> Uh, which is very uh, small, it's uh, two to three centimeters, so it can be placed right behind the incisal edge of a, of a tooth. So you can measure actually the color, the translucency of the tooth, if you measure the tooth against black uh, versus against a white background. So you can measure the tooth and then you can uh, refer to the, to the actual database, which is the it's it's not the Vita Shade Guide A3 or the uh, uh, Ivo the Chromascope uh, this one or that one. It's the actual optical properties of the actual materials in this database. So then I put all those together and I created a software which is uh, uploaded in an application which is called Dental Shade Navigator. You already saw the logo on the screen several times and. Uh, uh, I am trying to create a, a, a realistic uh, workflow. Uh, so uh, if you go and download, it's free to download. It's, it has no uh, charge at all. I'm not making money out of it. Okay, so what I am trying to, to do is, is to suggest an, a, a colorimetry workflow uh, to uh, select which shade is better for each case okay so let me show you a clinical example uh, first you take a let me go back uh, first you take a polarized picture uh, you can do this with a mobile phone uh, i'm using the mdp by smile light which has been made by dr Louis harden everybody knows him and uh, i'm taking those directly to the to the phone but uh, i have uh, provide the option to take this picture to with your dslr camera but then you have to upload it to the phone so it can work with the application for mac users uh, soonly i hope that not uh, soonly i i took the news that the application is going to be passed to the to the laptops of the mac so you you going to have to the option to use those on a laptop as well so what's the application all about 
you select first what kind of case uh, you like to use uh, you have for example for class four it will be <coughs> translucency will be prioritized while for class three uh, it will it will match first the luminosity of the material <coughs> then you have to uh, select what kind of clinical approach you you're comfortable to to use i mean if you use a single shade then uh, you will have not the option to select the enamel thickness you you will only select a body shade thickness uh, if you select the layer in then the software is going to be asking you to select what kind of thickness uh, you estimate that you are going to be uses to be used so for example in that case let's say that we have selected the one millimeter dentin and uh, 0 0.5 millimeter of enamel this you can clinically estimate if you just put a, a period on the probe and measure the thickness of the, the total thickness of the lesion that you have to cover and then the software is going to be asking you to acquire an image or you can take the photo at the time using the mdp or you can choose from library if you have uploaded from the dslr or you can have uh, uh, already taken the photo before the before any other procedure which i suggested to do because you have the dehydration afterwards uh, and then uh, choose the, from library to upload the, the picture okay so, so then you are uploading in the uh, uploading the picture and the uh, software has, is asking you to select a gray pixel this is for calibration reasons because the, the uh, software is going to calibrate the image you can see the difference in colors uh, one adjusting to the other it's going to calibrate the image to the actual color measurements of the of the actual uh, clinical case not uh, what the cell phone has uh, decided to, to consider as a natural color so then you have the actual colors then it's going to uh, say, to ask you which point at the tooth you want to match to then it's going to ask you to select a back, black background pixel on a tooth so it can measure the translucency and then it's going to ask you to select the white background on the tooth to measure the translucency so you have the, the zoom in option as well as you can see you, you can uh, make a better selection with the zoom in option option and at this point you you are going to hit the button guide to optimize results at this point the software is going to calculate the lab parameters on the on the selected uh, tooth pixel and the translucency on the uh, on the adjacent tooth which uh, you will be matching the composite with so then it's going to be referring to the database which i just show you that it, it's more, much more than that any, uh, at, at the time uh, and then it's going to suggest you which is the best combination depending on the selection of the composites that you already own so let me just show you a clinical case on the on the issue uh, we're talking about this uh, lateral incisor <laughs> so first we took the picture then we have put it on the uh, dsn application you can see the difference this is a calibrated image this is not calibrated image this is the on the left you see the actual uh, optical properties of the tooth on the right side you see what the camera sees okay then we isolate the tooth i i have to say to you that uh, i'm i'm doing this two years now i'm doing the i do this for uh, all my clinical cases all my clinical cases i shade much with the D dsn i can ensure you that it works but it has some learning curve or some workflow that you have to to learn how to do it but it, it gives reliable results uh, the, here I forgot to, to take a palatal key before I remove the uh, restoration so I started with the enamel shell on the proximal uh, then I went to the dentin shade okay I have a void here I did not notice this before I see the pictures but this is easily repairable so when I see the patient again I, I, I'm able to repair it I'm not Joanna Garcej of course <laughs> Uh, here we have a good view of the actual shade matching and here we see the 
the line. This line is the dehydration on the on the left side of the screen, and the actual composite uh, that was measured to match the color before the dehydration. So we are expecting to see some kind of blending after the rehydration of the tooth. This is the direct result. We still see the dehydration lines uh, across the, the the teeth. We see the actual color here, which is uh, very close to our restoration. And here is one week after that, we still have the void. We need to uh, repair it. Okay, this is not the issue on this kind of lecture, but we see the blending and we see that it blends very well, not with this one probably, but with this one that will that was the tooth that we made the measurements. So this is a polarized picture. This is the, the, the naked tooth. So I don't know how many of you have seen these uh, restoration when I was uh, showing the pictures. I, I only saw it in the, on the polarizer. And this is what it appears to be so well blended. Uh, not, not to this one, but to this one. Okay, so uh, of course you need to be careful and uh, use the thicknesses that uh, you have suggested that you're going to use. If you use thicker enamel, you're going to be grayish. So just use the, the proper thicknesses and you'll get the results. With this, I would like to conclude. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for listening to me, for tolerating to me. I would like also to invite you, please uh, follow our uh, Instagram and uh, face Facebook uh, page uh, on the Dental Shade Navigator. The application is completely free to use. You can use it with any gray card. Uh, you can um, uh, modify it and to fit your needs. Uh, let me tell you, I'm not a computer guy. I, I, I'm not a developer. So if any malfunctions, please uh, mail it to me so I will mail it back to the developers so they can uh, adjust uh, the the uh, the working of the uh, dental shade navigator. Don't leave me any negative uh, <laughs> evaluation if you don't do not communicate and if we do not resolve the problem. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Uh, I would like to. I would be happy to receive any questions you may have. Okay. Thank you, doctor, for your valuable presentation. And I'm checking if there is any question for you. We don't have any questions. So, oh, wow. So any, everybody was, uh, was sleeping. <laughs> it was very clear. And you give detailed information about the physics and also the structure of the tooth. And uh, it's interesting to share the dental shade navigator with us. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, you are using it for anterior? Uh, yeah, yeah on, only for anterior teeth. Only anterior. I don't see any, any reason of uh, implying this to the posterior teeth because uh, using A3, it will blend. Uh, I, I mean, uh, on the most of the cases, uh, it's not needed. It's, uh, it's, uh, maybe it's not needed so much on the class three uh, restorations, uh, which is are on the, on the back of the of the tooth, and if you use a, a very well blended material, a very translucent material, you will probably get the the, the best color fit. But when it comes to class four, well, that's a hell. That, 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 that's the most different uh, restoration for all dentists. If you see a, a proper made uh, class four, it's uh, I, I think uh, only masters can do uh, class four. I'm not a master. I'm <laughs> colorblind as a person. Uh, that This means that, that uh, okay, I am a man, I'm over 50 years old, so I cannot see colors the way that a woman sees it. So when <laughs> I go I go to my practice and I, I have some very talented colleague, colleagues uh, which are female and they, they do not uh, need to take any shade tabs to see. Uh, they see a tooth and say, oh, the, I will take this and this material and they make it and, and it, it's gorgeous. Okay, those are not needed, the, the dental shade navigator. I do need it. Why? <laughs> because I'm colorblind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so any, anyway, it's it's a help. It's, a, it's, a, it's an add-on to my practice. And it's very, very fast and easy to work with if you just once follow the, the workflow, 
the the software is guiding you it's it's made for dentists it's made by a dentist uh, oh. it's made for dentists uh, i i wanted to eliminate as many stages as possible so you may see the presentation that it's okay press this and press this and press this what what do i do the software is guiding you so you have to know the uh, the optical properties of the tissues which will uh, the, the software will calculate uh, you have to know the optical properties of the uh, composites which are running on the background on the database and then you have to to give information what kind of restoration you're having what thicknesses you have to use that's it okay. ready we have a question here yeah. uh, says do we use this system also on detection of white spot lesions no 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 i'm sorry uh, this is actually uh, a workflow which i developed because when i started to to measure the, to, to calculate the composites which i was using uh, i made an excel uh, uh, tab so then i, I was uh, with the elab method if you know for the indirect restorations uh, with the, from the bioemulation group. I was using the gray card, taking the DSLR picture, polarized. I had to take the SD card, pass it to the laptop, open the Lightroom, calibrate and see I have L here, A here, B here. Uh, then I was running to my Excel tab and I was saying, okay, the L is matching this one. The B is matching this one. The A is matching this one. And I, I was thinking, why don't I have a, so, uh, why do not create a software that uh, does this automatically and reduces so much the workflow? Because you cannot do this in, in every pa single patient that comes inside. I mean, all this procedure needs like 20 to 30 minutes to, to, to be performed. Okay, this is not possible. So why don't I use uh, a computer that can, that can take a picture? Okay, that's the one. A computer that can can take a picture okay so uh, i need a polarized picture okay i have the i have the mdp the uh, mobile dental photography from the smile light problem solved so then i have to upload the database and i have to provide to the software the calibration and the matching and i have to say to the software which parameters i need to match first so when i have the class four I need to match the translucency. When I have a class three, I need to match the luminosity. So the, the whole software has all the, this uh, mentality on behind, on, on the background. It works like this. Okay, mm -hmm. so unfortunately, I'm not a developer. So I had to uh, to pass the information to some developers which are, are not dentists. And uh, most of the times developers do not uh, always uh, um, work only on your development so I, I had many delays on the development side to, to fix some problems yes. uh, so i had some malfunctions from time to time okay i'm not taking any money out of it <laughs> so I, i'm paying the developers i'm paying the great card creator uh, i'm only doing this because i love it i just love it mm -hmm. <laughs> I see that you have the reference from the adjacent central, central incisor. Uh, did you try the uh, system with, with extensive caries on all anterior tooth? I mean, uh, in that case, what is the exact time uh, to take the calculations? I, I need to be honest. I don't do this for extensive cases because on extensive cases, it's easy. You match everything with the composite that you are placing. So the shade is yours. So you don't have to match the different sh shade. Okay. Uh, uh, I think Serhat is writing something. I, I don't know if you have to speed up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have to, I mean, uh, conservative about the tooth structure. So uh, yeah, large cases, we are trying to make uh, aesthetic restorations. <laughs> I would be glad if you could, uh, on the future, do some lecture on, on it. Uh, if you want me, I will send you a gray card. You can download the application. And please, please, I would be more than happy. <laughs> then thank you for the invitation. <laughs> OK, uh, on the behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank you all for your attendance. And uh, it's time to close the session now. Bye. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.